You're rocking with Kenneth in the morning on your Kenneth FM. Time to bring you some sporting news. Former Super Eagle striker Odio Igalo scored his first goal for Manchester United as they cruised into the Europa League last 16 at the expense of Club Bruges with 6-1 aggregate scoreline. Bruno Fernandes scored his second United penalty in a week after Simon Daly was sent off for a ludicrous handball to block Daniel James short. In other words, Espanyol beat Wolves 3-2, Ajax defeated Guitar Faith 2-1, Arsenal lost 2-1 to Olympiacos, Celtic lost 3-1 to Copenhagen, Inter Milan defeated Ludogorets 3-2-1, Basel part APL Nicosia 1-0, Kagen drew 1-1 as with as AS Roma, and Malmo FF lost 3-0 to Wolfsburg. With all the results, Olympiacos, Wolves, Getafe, Roma, Wolfsburg, Basel, Inter Milan, Bayer Leverkusen, Rangers, Lask, and Copenhagen have been qualified for the last 16. The draw for the last 16 will take place today with United able to face any of other teams left including Wolves and Rangers. Super Eagles and Club Bruges star Emmanuel Dennis has been ruled out of Nigeria's 2021 Africa Cup of Nations qualifying matches against Sierra Leone next month. Dennis suffered an injury as Club Bruges defeated Sporting RSC Charleroi 1-0 in their Belgian First Division A match last Sunday. Apart from Dennis, manager Geno Roy is also sweating over the fitness of racing against Paul Onuachu and SC Pandabon's Jamie Collins who was suffering from, the, from fatigue. Also, Super Eagles holding midfielder Wilfred Ndidi will undergo a late fitness test ahead of Leicester City's Premier League meeting with Norwich City today. Fox's manager Brendan Rodgers said the Super Eagles midfielder has resumed training with the rest of his teammates and is closing in on a return of, to action. Super Eagles target Bukayo Saka has been nominated for Arsenal's February Player of the Month award. Arsenal published the names of the former nominees on their official website yesterday. It is Saka's third straight nomination after being listed for December and January awards which he lost out. He will contest the February award with David Lewis, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang and Shokodran Mostafi. The winner of this month's award will be voted for by fans of the club. Zamalek president Motada Mansour says the sanctions imposed, imposed by Egyptian Football Association EFA against his club for failing to play in Cairo Derby are illegal. On Wednesday, the EFA punished Zamalek for their failure to play against Al Ali two days earlier, decided not only that Zamalek should lose the match 2-0, but that they will be deducted a further three points and pay a financial fine as well. WBC Boxing Heavyweight Champion Tyson Fury has been invited by Manchester United to share his inspirational life story to the squad following his remarkable victory over Deontay Wilder. Fury is on top of the world at the moment after his seventh round victory over American heavyweight rival Wilder last Saturday in Las Vegas and United are looking to him to provide insight into how to battle back from the brink. The Red Devils are asking Fury to come to their current training base to give a speech about his battle with depression to becoming heavyweight world champion. Manchester City manager Pep Guardiola has warned his players that the job is not done yet after City's 2-1 shock win over Real Madrid at the Bernabeu on Wednesday's Champions League first leg round of 16 clash. City came from behind to claim a famous 2-1 win, win against the 13-time European champions. It was positive news for the City after the shattering blow of their ban from European competition. Liverpool are close to knocking Manchester United right off their financial path after posting a record-breaking annual turnover of £533 million. Pounds. Sir Alex Ferguson once used a similar phrase in describing his mission to make United the most powerful club in the land, but Jurgen Klopp's side are now only 12 points away from their first Premier League triumph, which will take them back to within one of United's 20 top flight titles. They are also on the financial trajectory that could see them overtake their bitter old Tra Trafford drivers as well as Manchester City in terms of money made over one season. Inter Milan says they are willing to sign former Nigerian international Victor Moses 
on a permanent basis in the summer on the condition that the transfer fee is reduced by Sprinter Club Chelsea. The 2013 Africa Cup of Nations winning winger joined the Nera Zuri in the January transfer window with an option to buy set at 10 million euros included in the deal. Inter Milan are hoping that a discount on Moses' transfer fee could be obtained from Chelsea compared to the player's asking price and a final decision will be taken between now at the, and the end of April. Inter Milan are mindful of the fact that Chelsea own player has yet to force his way into the starting lineup with Antonio Candreva ahead of him in Conte's specking order of right wing backs. As the countdown to the 2020 Tokyo Olympics gathers momentum, the Ministry of Youth and Sports Development has assured that it is totally committed to the welfare of athletes, as, as exemplified by the Adoption Initiative. Minister of Youth and Sports Development Sonidari insisted that athletes' welfare remains top priority if Nigeria is to excel at the global event in Tokyo. Coach of Nigeria Premier Basketball League champion Rivers Hoopers of Portacourt Ogo Odeudu has stated that the team has started preparation ahead next month's commencement of the inaugural NBA Basketball African League. The Tigress player Evelyn Akato's club Flames Carolo Basket have advanced to quarterfinals of the 2019-2020 Euro Cup Women's Basketball. Nigerian table tennis star Aruna Kodri has described his defeat to Ahmed Saleh of Egypt in the final of 2020 IWTF Africa Cup as a painful one. The world number 18 was stunned by the 40-year-old Saleh who claimed the historical win after winning the fourth ring in Tunisia on Wednesday. Saleh ended the nine-year wait without the African Cup title when he cruised to a tough 4-3-11-6-5-11-11-9-6-11-11-9-9-11-11-3 win over Cordray. World number two Rafael Nadal stepped off his beat for a third ATP Mexico Open title with an impressive display of serving and shot making to beat Serbian youngster Miomir Kekmanovic. The Spaniard hit 20 winners as he kept his hopes alive of regaining the top ranking with 6-2-7-5 victory over the 20-year-old to reach the quarterfinals at the Acapulco Hard Court Tournament. Father of newly crowned WBC heavyweight champion Tyson Fury, John Fury has warned Anthony Joshua that his life will be a mystery should he ever meet his son in the ring. A fight between both boxers edged closer last weekend when Fury dominated Deontay Wilder to become a two-time heavyweight world champion. The clash has been penciled in for November or December, assuming Fury overcomes Wilder again in their trilogy fight and Joshua beats Cobra to pull off. But Fury's outspoken father has warned Joshua to stay away from his son. Wilder has just three weeks to trigger the rematch clause in his contract, but Fury's promoter Frank Warren hopes he can convince the American to step aside. Alright, that's about it on today's edition. And let me give you one more last story here. Tokyo 2020 Chief Executive Toshiro Moto says they are considering downsizing the touch relay for this year's Olympic Games because of the coronavirus outbreak. Tokyo 2020 organizers have chosen United by Emotion as the motto for this year's Olympic. Moto insisted the touch relay will begin in the disaster hit Fukushima Prefecture on March 29 and will not be cancelled despite the outbreak. Scaling down the size of the departure and arrival ceremonies could be among the measures put in place by Tokyo 2020 amid fears over the virus, which has so far killed 2,770 people and affected more than 81,000 people worldwide. That's about it on today's edition of Kenny Sports. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Good morning.